Um, nameless adventurer's notes. Month, unknown. Day, unknown. Weather, foggy. Finally here. Ochnanatlan. This ancient city now occupied by a violent and evil dragon. The final resting place of... If Aunt Liru knew, she'd been quite in the huff, that's for sure. But there's no other way. Even if they say I shouldn't take on this regrets of generations past, I still want to finish it. Though the abyss no longer poses as terrifying a threat as it did back when I was born, but whether for the sake of the Jade of Return, sought by countless adventurers, or to unravel the finding riddle of... I must go there. It's fine. No need to be nervous. You've already had a lot of adventures, right? You're a seasoned adventurer, so it'll all be okay. Not to mention, it's been so long, maybe that nasty dragon has long since vanished. Anyway, this is where it starts. My adventure. A nameless adventurer's notes. Month. Unknown. Day. Unknown. Weather. Rainy. Unbelievable. I ended up being attacked by the dragon after all. But maybe I should be thanking it. After all, I wouldn't have stumbled upon this place without it. The core of Kukuel seems like it was once the heart of the entire city. I heard a member of the tribe speaking about it before, how in ancient times the Sacred Lord once transformed himself into the heart of the Dragon City, but I never expected the meaning to be so literal. Unlike those I've encountered elsewhere, the secret source automatons here seem to be able to understand speech. Did the Sacred Lord make them in order to protect himself? Anyway, at least I don't have to worry about monsters coming for me for now. I can't believe it actually worked! I used the pyrophosphorite on my body to awaken the dragon spirit slumbering within the heart of the machine! But this little guy really is a dragon spirit? It's so... small. And absolutely adorable. And it's green, like a chunk of turquoise. So... I think I'll call it Kokuik. It's a path to the altar of Primal Flame. I saw the signs left by Aunt Liriwu. It really is the same path that... <coughs> walked. Still, there's only one chunk of pyrophosphorite left. I must make sure I don't use it up before I get to Tonatua. Goggles left behind by someone. These appear to be a pair of goggles that were left here a long time ago. They once belonged to an adventurer who challenged a mighty, unknown foe. The trap that once waylaid the people, planted by the sage whom she laid down her life to defy, has now been destroyed. These goggles are the sole remaining testament to her existence. Beneath the goggles, a stack of woven scrolls lie half-buried in the sand. The handwriting upon them is identical to that on the notes you discovered within Ochkanatlan. A nameless adventurer's notes. Month. Unknown. Day. Unknown. Weather. I can't tell from where I am now. It's completely different from what I imagined. I didn't expect the Tonatua to be such a desolate place. I can almost see what the Python King must have felt in those final moments. Still, there's pyrophosphorite everywhere. Does that mean that this is the origin of all the pyrophosphorite that adventurers get? But who could take it from here and give it to them? So that's it. It's only thanks to Coco that I now understand the true nature of the Jade of Return. The machine that could save Natlin, but not us. So many heroes have been sacrificed for this. So why draw us here? I get it. You can't touch it, can you? That's why you need our hands. Need Coco's. But even if it's a fake sacred grail, it doesn't matter if it's or Aunt Liriwu. Anyone who embarks on the journey is a true hero. This is the last fragment of pyrophosphorite left in land. Was it your plan for me to bring it here? I guess that's fine. Though since this way, nobody else will be tricked by you. I won't let you get it, because we're going to stop your plan, right here! 